Hello again from Killarney, Manitoba. This is Encouraging Word, a brief word of encouragement uh, from the Bible, and I'm glad you've taken the time to join us today. This week we have been talking about having a relationship with God out of which flows all our activity, all the things that we do for God begin with a relationship with God. If we try to do things for God without having a relationship with him, we become empty, just like the rich young ruler who from his childhood did a lot of religious things. And yet as he got older, he realized he was empty. He still needed more. He had no conviction of his faith or of his eternal destiny, and he needed to have some answers. And so he came to Jesus looking for some assurance in his life. Um, one of the classic verses often used to encourage people in their relationship with God is found in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, where Jesus says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Uh, he's actually speaking to a church here. Uh, although we've often used it at the end of services for individuals to make a commitment to Christ, this is actually what he says to a church, a church that is very busy. He says earlier in the, in the chapter, he's, I know your deeds. I know what you're doing. Jesus knows what's going on in our church. He knows what's going on in your church, wherever you're at. And he sometimes knows that uh, we've grown cold in some of our activities. He says to this church that your deeds are lukewarm. Uh, so here's a church that's doing things for God, that's busy, and yet they are lukewarm. And Jesus says, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Wow, those are not uh, words that you necessarily want to hear on Sunday morning from church or, uh, you know, when you're praying for revival, hey, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Uh, that's pretty strong language that Jesus uses for this church. Uh, and so what is Jesus' solution to this situation? Jesus says, let me in. He says, open the door. Uh, and, and let's build on this relationship, uh, you and me together, speaking the truth, uh, spending time with one another, uh, sitting down, of course, in those days and eating with one another uh, indicated some relationship that was building and developing, uh, sharing together food and conversation. So Jesus appears to be on the outside of this church, uh, certainly of their relationship, and he wants to be inside. You know, we know that a church is made up of people, and uh, uh, this same thing can be true of us. So let me ask you this question. What is your relationship with Jesus like today? Are you taking time to spend time with him? Are you taking time to share together, to listen to him, uh, letting him speak into your life? You know, I have stood at the altar many times and listened to couples uh, vow their undying love for one another only to see them in the coming years grow cold and lukewarm to one another, uh, disinterested even to the place of, of disliking one another and wanting to split up and end their relationship. That can happen spiritually as well. You know, we start off well in our relationship with God. We take time to read our Bible. We take time to pray. And then as days get busier, we have kids and we, we spend more time on our phone, we spend more time watching TV, we spend more time doing all kinds of things, worrying about our physical, you know, uh, conditioning and all the rest of it, and, and less and less time for, for Jesus and, and spiritual things. Um, the solution is still the same. I want to encourage you, no matter where you're at in your walk with God today, I, I, we, we have what we call nominal Christians. They're people who are trying to live for God, but don't really have a relationship with God. I want to ask you where you're at today, and I want to encourage you to open the door once again to having a relationship, to making Jesus an important part of your relationship. You know, when, when we have guests in our house, um, regardless of who they are, they become important. We sit down together, we eat breakfast together, we share together. They may go do their things throughout the day, and we may do some things throughout the day, but we come back together because we're in the same abode together. We're in the same house. And uh, I want to encourage you to let Jesus back into your life. Take time to be with him. Make time 
for him. You know, most of you who listen to this are believers. I know that. And uh, I want you to seriously consider your relationship with Jesus Christ today. Uh, Do you make time regularly for him? Do you listen to him? Do you discuss things together with with him? Do you discuss what's going on in your life uh, together? He is waiting at the door for us, and we just need to let him back in. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, I thank you that you care so much for us. You long to have a relationship with us. Lord, uh, you don't so much tell us of more things that we need to do except this one thing. We just need to open our lives to you and let you come back into our life and let us spend time with you and you with us. And so, Father, I pray for each person that's watching today, if we're honest, that we'll sincerely look at our lives and see where we're at. Have we allowed Jesus back in? Is he a part of what we do every day? And I pray for every person that's watching today, oh God, that you would um, take our eyes off all the things that we need to do and help us understand that we have to be with you. And that's the most important thing. So I pray, Father, your blessing on your people today. May they be encouraged in their walk with you and in their relationship with you. I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for taking time to be with me. And uh, I encourage you to take time to be with Jesus today. God bless.